our YouTube is coming home. And I'm gonna talk to you soon. Alright, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to answer some questions for a webinar for a thing called uh, Families for Depression Awareness, I think. And they've asked me to participate in a web seminar recorded live here from my room talking about depression. Now you see, as you can tell by my jovial nature, I'm a very funny guy and, I'm, and I enjoy having fun. I'm very happy. But the problem is I also struggle and have struggled with depression and manic depression. And, uh, well, I'm going to answer a couple questions that have been sent to me by my friend Jenny Thomas, who works at Families for Depression Awareness. Um, I'm just going to read them and then give my own personal response to the questions. All right. First question is, what is your experience with depression? All right. My uh, experience insofar with depression is that it is a mounting anxious uh, darkness that supersedes everything that I do and I have to work twice as hard to make things better whenever I'm being depressed by myself essentially uh, depression is uh, something that is like my mind is trying to ruin things for me you know like my own mind is uh, arguing against happy things in my life and making me try and focus on negative things. More than that, it's uh, it's just kind of this sort of like wet blanket that's kind of over all of my happy emotions that are at least you know omnipresent. Uh, they're just always there. They're always there to rain on my parade, you know. So. Uh, depression is a very nervous, very sad uh, disorder that attacks your happiness, essentially, and uh, precedes all those emotions like happiness and confusion or whatever for its own selfish gain. Alright, um, number two, what did depression feel like? Okay, I guess I can go a little bit back into that. Depression is kind of like a darkness that covers you up kind of, and you can feel it weighing down on you in a weird physical out of body sort of sense you can feel depression weighing down on you like an anchor where everybody else uh, seems to be able to just be stupid and have fun whenever they want to you being you know the depressed sensible one are being brought across as a pessimist because you are because there's this sort of pain that's on you and you're just reacting naturally to that, but people don't get that because they're not feeling the same things as we are with depression. Next question is, what did depression look like to your parents? Uh, my personal experience with my parents is that my dad, Happy Father's Day, uh, um, having said that, my dad didn't understand me at all. He, uh, he saw that I was depressed and just... Uh, thought that I was nuts, really. thought that it reminded him of my mom, uh, Julie, uh, that he really just didn't care. My mom, on the other hand, tried her best to help me cope uh, for, you know, whatever lack of success she had. She sure as hell tried once or twice um, because it was impeding my work in school. My ability to coexist with others in a school environment was being hindered by my depression. And that's when my mom stepped in, whenever she knew that my public, uh, uh, the view of the public towards me would be uh, affected by my depression. Then she jumped in, because she has a pre-existing anxiety about people not liking me. Let's see here. Next question. What caused you to reach out for help? Well, um, one day I was doing art, and I, uh, realized that all my art was central to death and there's nothing wrong with depressing art I mean it's some of the cornerstone work of our society and depressing art has been the way that artists have coped with their depression historically but I realized that my I had never really painted one happy thing so I thought if uh, 
maybe if I cured my depression, I could have a more well-rounded approach to art and not be typecast as a sad painter like Francis Bacon II or anybody, really. So I think my my feeling like I was being held back in my life was probably why I reached out for help. Question number five. What works or worked for you in getting and staying well? Now, you see, everybody who's ever had a disorder with anything, that's depression, that's anxiety, no matter what it is, they always have some relapse. Whether it's a total relapse, a semi-relapse, or even the thought of relapse. Everybody has it. It's unavoidable, and that's just how it is with mental disorders. Um, I find that centering myself emotionally and understanding that the people that surround me love me. And the thing that caused me to stop being depressed and moving on to being an ethical egoist was a man named Anton LaVey who was a writer back in the 60s and uh, I think 70s also. Uh, he was really a pop culture icon in that time. He was the founder of a thing uh, called the Church of Satan. He wrote a lot of things on ethical egoism based upon Nietzsche and Ayn Rand. Uh, you know, the, the, the philosophy of other people who can love themselves and not let depression rule their lives really was my reason for getting better. You know, it helped me to know that other people had the same problems and to talk about these experiences and to make videos about them and write things about them and record things about them to talk to people about them and know that everybody else has problems and the fact that I have problems doesn't make me a freak it makes me a normal human being that that really helped me a shitload uh, number six what, what are the biggest challenges you face in managing your depression well isn't that just a humdinger of a question, huh? The public. The public perception of people with depression is hindering. The idea that people have of people with depression is negative. And whether, whether I like it or not, the view of people with depression has, historically, and even now, been mocked and ridiculed and I'm not a sore loser I am you know I'm a comedian it's my job to make fun of people and make fun of things but the public ignores the clear-cut signs of depression and kind of instead of looking for cures to the problem they poke fun at it and segregate you from the rest of society I find that depression has given me, you know, a group of people to be around me, but they're all a, a leper group, really. I mean, they're a group of people that have been completely expedited by society and put in a little box, and nobody understands them, and the people that do understand them, they can't talk to, because therapists are first responders who have to talk to, you know, the government. If you ever have any thoughts of suicide, which, of course, whenever you have depression, most likely you're going to have. That's the problem with uh, with the group kind of ethic of depression. You know, uh, that, that there was a, an article that came out, a video article with a guy who, who checked out song lyrics and saw that there was some sort of like irony in depressing alone song lyrics and how, how many people felt them. And, uh, the one lady that responded to it said, we're all alone together. And that's kind of how it is. We're we're alone, and you know, until until society can really accept us as as people and not just a, a genre of people, uh, we won't probably be able to succeed. Additional questions: In the process of finding the right treatment plan for you, what did your parents do that helped you? Nothing. I took it upon myself as a self-respecting self-loving person to get help for depression. Uh, it was up to me as the person who was suffering from it. And the only person who could truly understand what I was going through 